Hey everyone, Gabriel here from Better AMS Team. Today we're going to talk about keyword research. We're going to talk about how to scale your Amazon keyword coverage using Helium 10 tools. And we're going to use my favorite tool, Cerebro, a reverse async tool. So let's get to it. Uh, first of all, Amazon keyword research or keyword research in general is one of the most is one of the most critical aspects of selling an Amazon or any other platform. You need to know your keywords to know where to rank and to show uh, your products to your audience, right? And with the right keyword targeting, your potential audience will find your products. But you have to get those relevant keywords first, so that you can generate sales and then more sales and then more sales. And on this strategy, we're going to focus on two things. So the first one is keyword relevancy. We want to make sure that we're pulling keywords that are relevant to the products that you're selling because we're going to filter a wide range of keywords, right? And we want to make sure these keywords are suitable for your buyers when they search for your products. And it makes sense, right? And we want to make sure the keywords have demand. We want to add keywords to campaigns that are going to start generating impressions immediately. And we want to make sure that you are putting money in to get a return on your advertisement spent. So we want to make sure the keywords have enough uh, search volume because you're going to bid on them. You're, you want, you're going to invest in them and you want to get a return. You don't, you don't, you don't want to put keywords in a campaign and don't, and don't get any impressions or any ad spend at all. Um, so. Using Helium 10, we're going to extract data from your ASINs. You're going to pick one of your ASINs. You're going to log in into helium10.com, and we're going to go to the reverse ASIN tool Cerebro, enter a product ASIN, where we will get back keyword suggestions, and we will um, create campaigns, all right? So I will go step by step on uh, all of these four steps that I have right here. First of all, log in or sign up in a helium10.com. This is a tool for smart Amazon sellers. So uh, go there. We will have one or two free uses. You don't have to pay for anything if you don't want to. Uh, but for these video training purposes, we're going to use, um, you can use the free version. I just created an account to show you an example. Um, and we will go to the reverse ASIN tool Cerebro right there um, on the homepage. You'll, you'll, you'll get to see the reverse ASIN tool. So we will enter a product ASIN on the search bar to get keyword suggestions. I suggest that you use your own product. If you have been selling for a while, this is the perfect video for you because it means your product has been gathering some data over the last few months. Uh, your product is ranked. Uh, for some relevant keywords where you have got sales. So it is better if you use one of your own ASINs. If you use one of your competitors, make sure it's like kind of a neighbor competitor, which means the competitor's bill is, is very similar to you and it's not the best seller because the best seller is probably ranked for a wide range of keywords where you are not ranked and PPC won't have the same effect if you are not ranked organically, right? So make sure that if you don't use your product, it's, pr it's probably out of stock. Well, let, try to use a competitor that's, that's very similar to you. Maybe a competitor that's doing a slightly better than you, that, that will make sense, all right? Um, and we wanna stay as relevant as possible. So what we are gonna, we are going to apply certain filters here. Please don't lose me. Um, and follow me closely over the next few steps. So first of all, as I told you, we're going to apply certain filters. We want to make sure we extract what's going to convert the highest at the lowest risk level, because the highest risk level you go, the higher your chances to get a high ACOS and don't be profitable on your advertising campaign. So we want to make sure we avoid risk. We mitigate the risk by choosing the best keywords. It's just like so it's just like selecting the best product. If you select a good product, it's going to sell well organically and it's going to do well. Uh, but if you pick the wrong product initially as a seller or as an entrepreneur, you're going to have a bad time trying to rank that product. And it's this it, it applies the same way to, for keywords. We we want to we want to make sure we select the best possible keywords so that your campaigns perform the best possible way. And we're trying to make that happen using these filters. So you're going to 
go uh, on this page where you're on this page we're gonna go to match type right there on the on the on the right um, on the right uh, bottom corner and you're going to select organic that way we make sure the keywords are drawn from organic results Amazon uh, Amazon you can pull from Amazon the sponsored keywords and Amazon recommended keywords but it not it's not necessarily where the product strand right it's it's more uh, like recommendation Amazon is given to uh, its users or in this case the buyer so we want to make sure the keywords are drawn from organic results then we're going to download the data right we're going to download the data I recommend you do Excel because we're going to apply certain filters in Excel and we need to manipulate the file a little bit to extract the most re relevant keywords so don't underestimate the next two steps I think if you are still on if you're still engaged in this video don't underestimate the next two steps because you can get creative and do a little two or three extra steps if you want to filter the keywords a lot better so first of all you're going to create a filter on the organic rank column you're going to go to column L you're going to filter less than or equal to 50 right and by doing this you will make sure you exclude all of the keywords where you are ranked uh, on position 50 or more than that right if you are ranked on position 50 or more than that it probably means you're you, you're not relevant to that keywords or you're not generating a lot of volume on those keywords to consider it relevant um, and you will you will want to play with this a little bit if uh, if uh, you don't get a lot of keywords doing it. If you get a lot of keywords doing it this way, you will want to make you, you you will want to do it by 25 keywords, for example, instead of 50. But it will depend on, on how many keywords you get. For this example, we did 50. Um, and we want to make sure we filter the highest volume keywords, right? At the same time, we filter relevancy by organic ranking. We want to make sure that the keywords we're choosing have demand, right? Because you're probably ranked number one on a keyword that has, I don't know, three searches a month. We, we want to avoid that because you will not get a lot of traction immediately with those keywords. So we're going to filter by search volume greater than 100 right it seems like it's not a lot of search volume and a lot of demand but you will want to play with this a little bit too because i know you guys have products uh, or you have selected niches that are very interesting and probably they don't have a huge search volume so it makes sense to do search volume greater than 50 just because you confirm that the keyword has demand and at the same time uh people are, are if, if you select a product or a trend that's going up people are likely to start searching this product a lot more and this validates somehow that the keyword is, is 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 growing right it'll be a lot easier to go over these keywords once you have applied these filters because you will get rid of what doesn't make sense and this strategy is not set to any specific kind of products feel free to use other filters and play around with it as i told you before um, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of um, oh, a little bit of a little bit of what I've learned from my experience, so that you can um, replicate that in your business the best possible way. And what we want to avoid is, is this: when you do a search on helium ten, let's say we're selling uh, snork snorkel masks, you'll you'll get uh, you'll get results like this: mask for kids, probably not relevant. It has a man, but it, it's not relevant. Riverdub, I don't know what, what that is. Adult face masks, that's not a snorkel mask. N95 mask kits, a lot of search volume, but it's not relevant. And here it is, snorkel mask, the, the actual keyword, the actual keyword where we want to rank, but it's mixed with all of these unrelevant keywords that have a lot of search volume and, and, and that if you would put on a campaign, it will do, it, it would just, it would just bleed cash, right? So now you're ready to go. Take your list of filter keywords and I'll give you uh, guidelines to a successful launch. So now that you're ready to launch campaigns, make bid management a priority. You want to make sure you control your bids. Uh, be smart with your starting bids. Don't go to aggressive. Uh, don't go to low to. Try to, start, try to stay near the suggested bid. And if you're seeing a better performance, try to raise the bid a little bit. If not, reduce the bid accordingly. Give your campaigns enough time. Make sure 
uh, that you don't pause campaigns or uh, start optimizing bids uh, after 24 hours. You want to consider that Amazon attribution is delayed by three to four days and Amazon has been clear in terms of what the attribution windows are for sponsored products is seven days for sponsored brands it's, it's 14 days so give them some time right uh, don't be scared unless uh, a keyword is doing like crazy it would make sense to to stop the bid but if not try to try to try to be patient okay make database decisions don't pause the bid just because it's been one week or two weeks and it's not performing the way you want it try to give it enough time all right, try to wait for those attribution periods to be over to analyze how the campaigns are performing. Now, you have to make sure too that you test all ad types and all match types. You wanna bid on uh, phrase, exact, and broad. You wanna make sure you're doing sponsored brands, uh, headline search ads, sponsored brands, product targeting, sponsored brands, uh, sponsored brands video, sponsored products, uh, sponsored products keyword targeting, sponsored products product targeting, sponsored display, um, you want to make sure you have all of that and, and, and that your keywords are on all of that different ad units. Now, keep your negative targeting to a minimum. Where this is not this is this is not for auto campaigns. So keep your ne ne negative targeting to a minimum. Well, we actually avoid negative targeting because th that can be solved with bid bid management. And don't move keywords around. Don't change one keyword from a campaign to a, to another because you can you cannot replicate the performance of a keyword. Or duplicate it to another campaign um, so please don't do that now the advertising philosophy a better AMS advertising philosophy has been over the last couple of years keyword research and bait management is the most important thing you can do to create profitable campaigns right um, it's not about uh, it's it's no uh, magic it's no gurus you, we have you have to do the work you have to put in the time and you have to control your budgets and bids, right? Never stop doing keyword research and product research. Trends change over time, and maybe your products is still popular, but people are searching in a different way, and you have to know how people are searching your products. Bid in all match types, we talked about this on the on the previous slide, and if a keyword research, if a keyword or product targeting is relevant but not profitable, analyze placements and bids, right? Maybe you want you're not profitable, profitable at a one dollar bid but you are profitable at a, at a 50 cent bid and it's not because and you're not on the first page but on the second page but if you're profitable there it makes sense to keep a spot there and to finish long-term growth is a lot better than short-term wins if you're building a brand think the long term don't just think uh for for the month or for the year think five years from now things will be a lot clearer that way and some extras campaign structure poor versus the best campaign structure we recommend that you have one product per app group per campaign and it's just because it's a lot easier to scale and I'll show you why with a very simple example if you have a campaign that has three ad groups in it with three different products in it and three different set of keywords you will get different different ACOS or different returns Let's because now there's ROAS too. You will get different returns on each ad group, right? So you won't be able to raise the budget of these poor structure campaign because you don't know if the 70% ad group, 70 ACOS ad group is going to spend a lot more than the one, oh, sorry, than the one you want to spend, you know, um, than the other ad group where you where you have a 10% ACOS. So it's a lot better to do uh, one product per ad group per campaign. It's going to be a lot easier to scale. Uh, and it's going to be a lot easier when you want to allocate more budget for a specific product um, without going crazy about whether this ad group will spend more money or not. And that's it, guys. If you want to see more info, more uh campaign uh more analysis from us just go to our youtube channel we are posting a lot of content there and we want to make sure you guys have a lot of information available um to just uh start creating more campaigns and start playing a little bit with what amazon is offering in terms of that inventory so that's it thank you very much guys take care see you later